Hey, it's Genoa with The Crafty Miss. Thank you for joining me. Stay tuned if you'd like to learn how I made this cutting board using sublimation printer and a Dollar Tree glass cutting board. Okay, so today we're going to be making these cute little sublimation glass cutting boards. And let me go over the materials that you'll need to duplicate this or make one similar to it. Okay, so first you're going to need a glass cutting board, and I got the glass cutting board from the Dollar Tree for a dollar. They have the square cutting boards, and they also have round ones. This one, I have removed the four little rubber feet that were on the back of the cutting board, and I put them here on my mat so that we can apply them back to the board after we're done with our project. Or you can toss them, it's completely up to you and whatever your preference is. I've also taken an alcohol wipe and wiped down the cutting board to remove all the dust, the residue, and leftover glue bits from where those rubber feet were on the board and take off any fingerprints that I may have put on the board by handling it. Okay, we're also going to need some white vinyl. This is just regular permanent Cricut vinyl. You can use Oracle or Sizer vinyl, Caesar vinyl, um, whichever you like, but you need it in white. Okay, and then you're going to need cork backing. This is adhesive back cork that I got from a roll um, from Office Depot, not Office Depot, um, Home Depot. And I don't know if you can see, but it's really shiny. That's from the adhesive that's already on there. So when we're done, we're just going to simply remove the backing of this and then apply it to our board and we'll have a, a completed cork back on the cutting board that will look just like this so that's completely finished and then you can use this as an actual cutting board and it won't slip around because of that cork on the back I also like to use that cork backing when I'm working with just these regular ceramic tiles that you get from Home Depot as well so you just cut off the four by a quarter size and apply it right to the back. Okay, in addition, you may want to grab either some heat gloves or some kind of oven mitt so that you can protect yourself because the glass is going to be extremely hot. And last but not least, you will need sublimation printer and paper. I'm going to be using my Epson 7 D720 printer and the A sub sublimation paper. And whatever kind of heat you're going to be using for the sublimation, so that would be your t shirt heat press, or if you're like me, your Cricut Easy Press too. So let's go ahead and turn on our Easy Press or your heat press, whichever you're going to be using. And I'm going to let mine heat up to 400 degrees. Now, it could possibly be done lower than that, but that's what I did to accomplish this. So I'm just going to kind of repeat the same steps. And so the first part of the process while we're waiting for our heat press to warm up is for us to apply the white vinyl. Now, the cutting board has a smooth side and it has a rough side. I'm going to be applying the vinyl to the rough side because I want the smooth side to be what is facing up for my artwork. Okay, so I'm just gonna take my little weeding tool and kind of pick at the corner here to separate this vinyl. And hopefully it won't give me too much of a problem. Okay, so we got it separated. I'm going to take that backing paper and just put it into the garbage. So here we have, um, I've cut the vinyl and the cork to eight um, square inches, so eight on the length and the width. The cutting board itself is a little bit shy of eight inches, so we have lots of room. Just kind of wiping the little dust particles that I see. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball and drop that board down. 
there's going to be some overlap because again the board is smaller than eight inches so I was fully aware that that was going to happen you just want it to be all the way covered so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little exacto knife and just run it along the cutting board and cut off any excess vinyl and you want to do that on all four sides and you can do this now or you could have done it after you have applied the image I find it easier to do it now while the board is cool and you don't have to worry so much about possibly burning yourself okay so then you want to just Go ahead and remove that excess vinyl. And I'm just going to clean up that corner just a bit. Didn't cut that at the corner. Okay. little bit in this corner too. Okay, just pay uh, special attention to the corners. So I'm seeing now that they didn't cut as cleanly as I would have liked, but it's not an issue, not a problem. That was an easy fix. So now we have this back that has the vinyl applied to it. This is the top of the board. I don't know if you can tell the difference, but you can see this is the back and this is the top of the board. Okay, so my heat press um, has heated up to the 400 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and take this over to the heat press. Okay, so the next step is we're going to take our glass board and with the vinyl side facing up, I'm going to put that down on my pressing pillow and then I'm going to cover that with my Teflon sheet and then take the easy press and put that on top and hold it down. So I didn't have like a really set time for how long I would do this. Um, you just want to kind of see that the vinyl is in a melty kind of state and that it is adhering to the board. So after a few seconds of applying light pressure and high heat, I'm just going to lift the Teflon sheet up. And I can see that the vinyl is adhered to that pretty well. I'm just going to apply just a little bit more. And the thing with using the heat press on glass or on tile is that the heat really comes right back up. So you have to be careful because if you set it for 400, the heat really is a lot higher than that. Okay. So I could hear when I was peeling that Teflon sheet back that this vinyl is really stuck on there. I don't want to touch it because it's going to be really super hot right now. So now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and get our graphic ready and just let this cool down just a bit. So let's go over to the computer and pick out a graphic. Watch. I'm sorry, my camera had uh, cut off a portion of the recording. So let me just explain what it is that I've done. So I am using my Cricut Easy Press 2, as you see here. I had it turned up to 385 degrees. And then I applied my image, which I cut out at 8 by 8 And I applied my image to the rough side of the board over the back of that white vinyl. And then put the Teflon sheet on top and did the heat press. Um for a few minutes. I don't know exactly how long. Yours may be different if you're using an actual t-shirt heat press, industrial press. I pressed on there for several minutes and then 
just kept checking to see what the image looked like after applying heat. Now I'm going to use this um, pot holder because it's extremely hot to turn it over. And what I did is I just kept checking the image and once the image burned through the white vinyl and shows through the glass, this is what I'm left with. So this was the image that I chose. This board is really, really, really hot. So I'm going to let it cool down. And then once it's cooled down, then we'll cut off the access and put our court backing on here and finish the project up. So again, once I applied that vinyl to the back, I then just taped using some heat transfer taped the image that I wanted to the back of the vinyl with the picture down. So you can see I still have the sublimation paper on there. You can see that's the little tape that I taped it on there with. And so I took the heat press and applied the heat press to the back of that paper and then kept checking to make sure that it was to my liking. So once I flipped it over and saw that the image was completely coming through that white vinyl now I'm happy with it and I'm just going to wait for it to cool down so that we can go to the next step. You can choose any design that you would like. As with the first cutting board, um, I chose an image of just a woman, but this one I chose an actual like kitchen type image. But you can do any one you want. You're not going to be able to do it in Cricut Design Space because it won't let you do an 8x8, but you can use Word, Photoshop, publisher or any other uh, desktop design application that you feel comfortable with. So let's cool down and then after that's cooled down then we'll go ahead and finish the project up. So now that the image has completely cooled down what I did is remove the backing paper for this and I added the cork. I cut the cork down any you know thing that was hanging over the edges and then I added the rubber feet back to the board. And now these are ready to be used for coasters, cutting boards, or you can use an easel and have them just on display as home decor. I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Please make sure that you're hitting the like button, subscribing to the channel, and hitting that notification bell. And if you have any questions or you'd like to see me do a different type of tutorial, leave it in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching me. This is Genoa with The Crafty Mess signing off. Until next time.